Hey guys, it's TSSC, and today we're going to be comparing two relatively similar games, and these games are obviously, as the title suggests, Crisis 3 and Titanfall. The reason that we're comparing these two games is that they are relatively similar. You know, they're both fast-paced, they're both that same kind of Call of Duty-esque gameplay style. They both have that same kind of parkour aspect to them. Crisis has the big jumping using their nano suits, and Titanfall has jetpacks, wall running, and double jumping, which is obviously a huge thing for parkour. Both games are extremely futuristic, using technology that is unheard of to us in these current times. And both titles are unfortunately both published by EA. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a range of categories. These categories can be seen on your screen right now. And we're going to be comparing the two. And we're going to be giving them a score on each of the categories. And adding them up at the end and toasting them together. And hopefully giving us an idea of which one you should buy. Or otherwise if you've bought them both already then which one gets the glory. So we're first going to start out with the obvious categories. The categories that you can clearly tell which of the two games is going to win. And then afterwards we're going to get onto the ones that are a little bit trickier to decide the winner on. So first we're going to cover graphics and we're going to start with Crisis 3. Now Crisis 3 was made on CryEngine 3, which obviously is known for its graphical power. So because of this the game does obviously look pretty amazing. And quite frankly, I don't know a game that has better graphics than Crisis 3 does. So because of that, obviously we're going to be giving Crisis 3 a total of 10 for graphics because it does have the best graphics you can possibly get. Now, Titanfall, on the other hand, does actually have not the best graphics. It isn't be graphically the best looking game, but it does run on the Source Engine, and as you know, the Source Engine is not known for having particularly great graphics. If you've ever played Counter-Strike, then you'll know that for a fact. It doesn't actually look very good at all. So, for a Source Engine game, Titanfall does actually look pretty amazing, and you can't deny that. And also, the graphics aren't particularly unbearable. They have made pretty good use of shaders. You can see, you know, the sort of 3D feel to all of the textures within the game so it's not actually that bad at all so I'm gonna give it a 6 because it does deserve some props for running on the source engine and still having the graphics that it does now the next thing to cover is performance for this I've given crisis 3 a 10 that's because I can unbelievably run crisis 3 at full graphics on my PC and still manage to get 55 frames per second which is in my opinion absolutely amazing Bearing in mind the fact that Crisis 3 does have these graphics which are absolutely ridiculous and look so lifelike despite the fact it is a completely futuristic game. Titanfall on the other hand does also have extremely good performance but there is one issue with it. This is that to run the game with the insane texture quality you are meant to have 3 gigabytes of graphics RAM. Now I honestly do not understand that because I don't actually know anyone that has 3 gigabytes of graphics RAM. Because GPUs these days which have 3 gig of RAM actually are just far too expensive and aren't really worth it because there aren't really many games that make use of it. And also what I don't understand is that the texture quality of even the insane texture quality on this game is actually really rubbish. Like if you see the R101C carbine which you will see me using within this gameplay, if you see the number on the front of the gun, the one that's really close to your face, you can't even make out what it says because it's so badly blurred. It's for that reason I really don't understand why it's actually got to take up 3 gig of graphics memory when there isn't actually that that brilliant quality of textures even on the insane graphics quality but overall the performance of this game is pretty good you just can't run it on insane graphics quality unless you have a really expensive graphics card so it's for that reason I'm gonna give this game an 8 out of 10 now the next thing to cover is the campaign now obviously you might be thinking that Titanfall doesn't actually have a campaign well it kind of does because it does have that multiplayer campaign which is not really in there for the fact that the, de the developers actually thought it'd be a good idea they just kind of thought they had to make it seem like they had some sort of campaign within the game and they probably did sell a few more copies of the game because of it but obviously it is pretty rubbish and there's not really any reason to play it at all and it's just kind of a bit boring and no one even bothers paying attention to any of the stuff that's going on when you're actually playing it but because it is there and because it does actually have a few cool moments few cool cutscenes that are in it I have given Titanfall a 3 although that is maybe a little bit generous but now let's go on to Crisis. Although I'm yet to complete Crisis campaign I have put a decent amount of time into it and as campaigns go I would say it's pretty good but as it is a campaign it is very linear it is literally just follow this guy wait for him to open the door or otherwise you've got to open the door when he gets to it and then you go and kill some people there's not really much to it apart from that but the actual storyline of the campaign is quite well written it's quite enjoyable to play and it's quite well put together we'll say that for the least but even though as first person shooter campaigns go these days it's quite good it's not actually that amazing and I wouldn't buy the game for the campaign by no means is this game of Borderlands which obviously has the best campaign out of any first person shooter game ever and for that reason I've given the campaign an 8 because as first person shooter campaigns go it's quite good but it isn't worth buying the game for so now let's go on to the next category and the next category is obviously what everyone's been waiting for and what you're most likely going to be buying the game for 
Now, this is the multiplayer, and obviously, the multiplayer is what you're going to be spending the most amount of time in within a game, because you can spend, say, 100 hours on a multiplayer, yet you can only spend around 8 hours on a campaign, depending on how long it is. So, obviously, this category is extremely important in deciding which one is best for you, and that's why I've broken the multiplayer section down into four different categories. These categories can be seen on your screen now, and we're going to get an average from all of them put together, and then that'll be our overall score for the multiplayer section. So, first up, we've got balance. Now, this is obviously quite a big thing in first person shooters you don't want to sit there getting killed repeatedly by the same overpowered gun over and over again first up we've got crisis and this is what is in my opinion an extremely horribly balanced game within crisis there are only actually four actually viable weapons that you can choose to make a class with these are the scarab the scar mod 2 the feline x3 and the fy 71m all of the other weapons within the game seem to have just been put in there to be nothing more than a number, i.e. they can say they've got 100 guns in the game despite the fact you only ever use 4 of them. And then on top of that, you also have the bows, poles and the riot shield thing which has been put around the map that you can pick up when you're playing. And all three of these weapons are one shot kills, it basically means that in a game where you've got a lot of health, you can die instantly, despite the fact you may have put about 5 bullets into your enemy, when they just hit you instantly and get a one shot kill is extremely irritating and it's so annoying when people do it. And I actually do find myself rage quitting from certain matches occasionally when people are using them to the point where I'm getting so stressed out when they're actually people going 50 for, ni 50 for nil when they're not even doing anything that's particularly strenuous. And so because of all these reasons we're going to give Crisis 3 a 6 for balance but I do think that's a little bit generous but within the weapons that you can use and that are viable there isn't really one that stands out over the other ones because they are all exactly the same in my eyes. It's not really going to get stressed at any of those choosable weapons for your class. Titanfall, on the other hand, does have some of the best balancing of any game I've ever played. And this is only mainly due to the reason that there are only about 10 pilot weapons within the game. Because everything does something different in this game, all the weapons do something completely different. So you have the single fire assault rifles, you have the fully automatic assault rifle, and you have like the burst fire assault rifle. They all do something different, which means they are very easily balanced. And all of the weapons do well in their own certain specified positions. And there isn't really much more to say about the balancing within Titanfall because, as I said, it is extremely good. So it's for that reason that we are going to give it a 10 because I haven't actually seen a first person shooter that has better balancing than this game does. So I actually love this and I think it's one of the best features about this game. Now the next category is Hit Ridge, or Netcode as some people like to call it. And we're going to start off with Crisis. Crisis as a whole does seem to have extremely good Netcode. But the issue with it is that there is the occasional blip within the system. For one, there are often kill trades, which you will most likely see within Battlefield 4, but you do see it within this game as well. And secondly, I'm always playing for ping of around 150. That is, in my eyes, absolutely awful. And although I'm rarely killed when I'm behind cover on my screen, you really can feel the high ping, which is really annoying to me. But because, as I said, as a whole, the netcode is extremely good, we are going to give Crisis 3 a 9 out of 10 for the hit reg. We're now going to move on to Titanfall, and with Titanfall I know that wherever I shoot my bullets are going to go, and this is mainly due to the fact that there are dedicated servers in data centres placed across the world. Titanfall has the best connection that I've ever had within a video game, and again that's all I really need to say, so for that reason we're going to give Titanfall a 10 out of 10 for hit reg. Next up we're going to go for map design, and with Crisis, the map design does tend to be quite generic, which is a bit of a shame. For example, on the main map, which is called Financial District, which always seems to be being played on whatever server you ever seem to go on, there is just literally a high point in the middle and some low points around the outside. Now, in my eyes, that is not really a very well thought out map. None of the maps are really very interesting, but then again, they do seem to work quite a bit. But, as I said, they're not really very groundbreaking and they're not really the most interesting maps that you can play. Also with Crisis, there are several maps that I really, really strongly dislike. Top of my list of maps that I hate is Skyline. The best way to think of Skyline as a map is if you've ever seen that YouTube video where they try and see how many fat people they can cram into the mini at once, it's essentially that. It's just so tight, it's just absolutely horrible to play. And I honestly just really do not understand why anyone actually enjoys playing it. But as I said, the maps do seem to work with the game as a whole. Obviously, as I said, there are a few exceptions to that, i.e. Skyline. So it's for this reason that we are going to give the map design of Crisis 3 a 7 out of 10. So now let's move on to Titanfall's map design. Now the, the design of Titanfall's maps is extremely unlike any other game we've ever seen. And if you think about it, it actually must have been extremely difficult to actually plan any of Titanfall's maps. This is because the maps actually have to cater for two different types of gameplay. You have to be the kind of lower ground level 
type the gameplay of the Titans and there also has to be the whole verticality aspect for the pilots themselves to be able to run around and do the whole parkour stuff. Even so, all of the maps offer a whole range of movement and you can pretty much make up all of your lines within the game. You don't actually have to follow any kind of set pattern of movement features of where to go. Titanfall's maps are the complete opposite of linear and because of the whole fact that they are extremely a completely new kind of style of map design, they are everything but generic. So because as you can imagine the maps are extremely hard to design because of the fact you are trying to cater towards two different styles of gameplay, we do have to give map design again a 10 out of 10. Now the fourth and final category within our multiplayer category is gunplay. Now within a first person shooter this is obviously a very important category. Although Crisis 3's gunplay is overall quite good, all the guns do seem to have extremely weird uncontrollable recoil where they seem to gun the guns just seem to kind of wobble from side to side and it's not really very controllable. Titanfall on the other hand has no recall but this is actually an extremely good thing for Titanfall because Titanfall is a game all about fluidity and this does really seem to kind of fit in with the whole gameplay style that Titanfall are going for. So because of this we're going to give gunplay for Crisis a 7 and Titanfall again we're going to give a 10. That means that for an average of the multiplayer section we're going to end up with Crisis getting a 7 and Titanfall getting a 10. The next category is originality, with Crisis 3 getting a 6 due to the fact that it's quite similar to both Halo and also its own prequels, which means that it's obviously not particularly original. And we're also going to give Titanfall an 8, bearing in mind it's kind of like COD, but at the same time it's not really much like COD, so we can't really knock it down too far for that. The next category is style, and obviously Crisis 3's colour palette is pretty awesome with a whole kind of Tron-like glow to it. And so for that reason we're going to give style an 8 for Crisis 3, but for Titanfall we're going to give it a 10 due to the fact that obviously the wall running looks absolutely awesome when you pull it off correctly. The next category is bugs and there is a huge issue with Crisis 3. If you don't know, with Crisis 3 there is a huge problem with the fact that there is an extremely high amount of mouse input lag, but it does make it extremely difficult to aim. It's for that reason that we're going to give bugs an 8 for Crisis 3 because aside from that there isn't really anything but obviously that is a very big issue so we're going to have to knock two off for that. In Titanfall I'm yet to come across a glitch so for that reason we do have to give Titanfall a 10. For fun factor I've given Crisis 3 a 7 because it's obviously quite good, it is quite fun but it does get a bit repetitive quite easily and quite quickly. Titanfall on the other hand is a blast to play, the whole parkour aspect does make it absolutely awesome to play and really enjoyable so for that reason we're obviously going to have to give the game a 10 out of 10. For replay value, both games are going to get an 8 because in Crisis 3 there are kill streaks to keep you playing so you can get the high ones and also there's the campaign and the reboot or the prestige system that will keep you playing for a long time. In Titanfall there's also the prestige system as well as these awesome moments and completely different styles of gameplay within each match. In total then Crisis 3 gets a total of 72 whereas Titanfall gets a total of 73. As you can see it's extremely close so both games are very viable buys for you. I've been TSS and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.